Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for this exciting Zero to Hero Guide to Dashboard API and the Python SDK. My name is John Kukta, and I'm a solutions architect on the Cloud Platform and API product team at Meraki. If you like, you can find me on GitHub, where my username is tkip is a legacy cipher. I'm a network guy first and foremost. I got started in networking almost 20 years ago when I built a 10 base T LAN so my friends and I could play StarCraft and Counter-Strike together. Uh, more recently, I've been on both the vendor and reseller side of the equation with two different Meraki partners, a Cisco Gold partner and service provider in Southern California. I also worked on the customer engineering team at Xeris, which was a networking hardware uh, and software manufacturer that specialized in cloud managed identity Wi-Fi. Uh, at Meraki, I'm focused on making it easier for our technology and sales partners to leverage our API and realize the compelling sales opportunities it enables. Uh, I'm excited to give you this crash course into using the Meraki dashboard API and writing your first uh, Python application using the Meraki Python SDK. This presentation is written with some familiarity with Python in mind, uh, but even if you're not already familiar with Python, I hope that this will help kickstart your journey into the world of network programmability. Today, we'll consider a familiar problem. Someone made an undocumented change somewhere. Granted, we all know it was probably Todd here, uh, but we're gonna fix his mistake. In this scenario, you're a senior network admin responsible for the Wi-Fi experience at a company with offices around the world. Checking your email, you learn that some users are complaining about slow Wi-Fi. After ruling out RF and client-specific issues, a junior engineer reports that they spent all morning checking configurations and found that an SSID bandwidth limit was improperly applied to at least one SSID on at least one network. Luckily, removing the limit fixed the problem. Seems simple enough. Unfortunately, users at many other locations are also complaining. And even more unfortunately, your company has hundreds of networks with different SSIDs at many of the sites. In this session, we will review how a Meraki admin might solve this problem using the Dashboard API. So let's look at how we're going to tackle this problem. First, given a few API options, we'll pick the right API for the job. Then we'll kick the tires on a Meraki Dashboard account and API key so you can prepare your developer environment. Then we'll dive into building an app using the Python SDK with real working Python code. And finally, we'll remediate the problem using the Python SDK. So. What are the Meraki APIs? We have three. Captive Portal API and Scanning API are purpose specific for extending Captive Portal uh, functionality and providing location analytics respectively. Whereas Dashboard API empowers us to both monitor and configure our networks programmatically. To solve our problem, we'll use the Dashboard API. There are a few simple steps to take to start interacting with the Dashboard API. Start by logging in your dashboard account. In this scenario, you probably already have one, but if you are not already a Meraki admin, then you can create one for free uh, at dashboard.meraki.com. Every interaction with the API is stateless, meaning that every call has all the information needed to execute the requested action or return the requested information. This is a feature of REST APIs in general. The dashboard API respects every call to have an API key with permission to execute the desired operation. So we need to provide our authorization in every call that we make. So once you've logged into the dashboard, enable API access and generate an API key. Then add it to your OS environment variables for easy access later. This will enable you to write applications without storing the API key itself in your source code, which is a bit of a risk if you're ever gonna share that with anyone else down the line or just store it uh, unencrypted on your computer. Um, the environment variable should be called Meraki underscore dashboard underscore API underscore key, and that's in all capitals. And if you haven't already, install Python on your dev machine. We need at least Python 3.6 to use the Python SDK, uh, but uh, I believe the current installer is 3.8 or later, which is fine. Before we dive into the code, let's do a quick sidebar and review the benefits of using Meraki's Python SDK. You can make direct HTTP requests to dashboard API in any programming language uh, or REST API client. But using a client library like the Python SDK, where we've wrapped all those API calls in Python functions, will make it easier for you to focus on your specific use case without the overhead of having to write functions to handle the dashboard API calls. 
so you can interact with the API endpoints like you would with a normal Python function. This is a lot easier, uh, you will find, than manipulating JSON text strings. We also handle automatic retries. So uh, if you hit any HTTP 429 rate limits, then the SDK will handle the automatic retry for you so that you get the data that you need without worrying about the rate limit. Uh, it can also simulate API calls without changing the production environment, uh, which can be very useful if you want to see what will happen. And it also handles logging um, and other convenient processes so you can focus on writing the code and getting the job done. Uh, once you take a look at the code, you'll see how little code it actually requires to start interacting with the dashboard API if you use the Python SDK. The Meraki Python SDK is updated every week with support for the latest API endpoints. And if you haven't yet installed it, install it using pip so that we can use it in our Python application. Uh, the command to install is pip install Meraki. If you've ever used pip before, probably straightforward. Um, on virtually every Python supported platform, it will be the same command. Now that the SDK is installed, let's look at actually using it. Here we can see the first benefit of using the Python SDK. Using the Python SDK initializing a dashboard connection requires only two lines of Python. And in this example, there are some comments. So if you want to count those, sure, it's only four lines. Um, but the console output on the bottom, which starts with Meraki, uh, colon info, that reflects the successful API session initialization. The Python SDK will automatically check our environment variables for a key named Meraki dashboard API key, like we discussed earlier, and use it to initialize our dashboard API session. So that means you don't have to add the key itself to your source code, uh, which would be risky, right? If you were going to share this uh, code with anyone else or publish it on GitHub. Um, and you also don't have to format any of the HTTP headers, which would be tedious and would also complicate the code. Most API calls will require passing values for organization ID or the network ID, depending on what you're actually doing. Uh, in this second cell, we fetch a list of the organizations and that the API key can access. So an API key will have access to uh, whatever organizations the user associated with that key has access to. So if you are an admin that has access to three organizations, your API key will have access to three organizations. For later operations, we'll use the first organization in the list. That's just to keep this code tight. But you could instead choose to iterate through every organization that's returned if you wanted to make this uh, change that we're going to look at in a moment across all of the networks in your organization, um, in all of your organizations. Then the list of networks can be called with a single line of Python using the get organization networks method. You can see here that it only takes one argument, which is the organization ID, which we called from the list of organizations that we got from the get organizations method. Notice how we're not resupplying the API key or formatting JSON or dealing with endpoint URIs or any of that for any of these calls. The Python SDK is abstracting the REST operations so that we can focus on writing Python. Now that we've got the organization and network values figured out, we can get to the task at hand, check for any SSID level bandwidth limits. We can only run this call on networks that have wireless devices. So if you've ever looked at network type like combined or wireless, um, we can only operate this on uh, devices that actually have wireless devices in them, right? Because we are operating on SSIDs. So we have a for loop here that will check each entry in the networks list. So it'll check every network and it will look for wireless in the network product types. And then for each network, that has wireless in the product types, it will uh, find uh, the SSIDs in it. The get network wireless SSIDs endpoint is what's returning the SSIDs, whether they're enabled or otherwise, whether they have limits or otherwise, it's getting all of the SSIDs. Here, we're using a Python list comprehension. That is the first, uh, really technically the second line of code after the comment, um, called organization SSIDs with limits that contains the pieces of information that we require for any, uh, for identifying any SSID with a bandwidth limit set. So those parameters, SSID per client bandwidth limit up, limit down, SSID bandwidth limit up, limit down, those are the uh, parameters of the SSID in API formatting that actually control the traffic limits that we're looking for. Um, so, if you're not familiar with list comprehensions and how quickly they help you to iterate through lists of information, it's definitely worth looking up because you can make your code very, um, uh, you can make your code very tidy 
and uh, drill through networks very quickly, as we've done here. Now, if there are no SSIDs found that have bandwidth limits, then the length of the list of SSIDs with bandwidth limits will be zero. So uh, we won't have found any. And in that case, then we'll just let the user know there are no SSIDs with bandwidth limits set. If that were to happen in this scenario, then what could we conclude about the initial problem? I think it'd be safe to say that the wider issue is not related to SSID bandwidth limits, right? Uh, it is worth noting, however, that SSIDs can also have traffic shaping rules that are applied on a per rule basis, so for specific applications. And this script does not review those in this particular part, um, but we do have code later that can remove them. So consider checking those rules and iterating through all of those rules as a separate challenge. If you'd like to build that out, you can use this code as a starting point. Let's check in for a moment and review our progress so far. So far, we've initialized the dashboard API session. We've gathered the current state information for the networks in one organization. And we've narrowed that information down to a list of SSIDs that need attention. In other words, the ones that actually have bandwidth limits set. But what haven't we done? We haven't manually formatted any JSON REST queries. We haven't drilled through dozens of network pages in the, in the UI in the dashboard GUI. So what do we do next? We're going to script the removal of the SSID limits. Uh, we're going to build a function, and then we're going to execute it. So now let's build a method that resolves SSID limits. Um, to remove them, we need to modify the parameters that we were referencing earlier per client bandwidth limit up and limit down, and then SSID bandwidth limit up and limit down. So on the SSID level, using update network wireless SSID, which is the name of the method in yellow, um, we will set all the bandwidth limits to zero. Zero equals unlimited. Separately, and that's the second part of this, uh, we will remove any custom traffic shaping rules using the update network wireless SSID traffic shaping rules method. Rather than running these operations directly on the data set, we've built here a function that we can call later when we want to. And the argument is it accepts is a list of SSIDs. So this makes our code a little bit more reusable. Rather than calling it directly when we need it and building a script in a very linear fashion, we can build a function that we can call at any time. And if we ever needed to do this type of thing again in any other application, we could just copy and paste the code. So based on what this method does, can you estimate how much time you'll save calling this function rather than drilling down to each SSID in the GUI? Next, we're going to build a method that removes the custom rules. So we talked about those a little bit earlier. Uh, the custom rules are a different object, a different parameter. So uh, we're going to define a separate method that handles those. It's going to remove them from anywhere uh, where, the, um, where the SSID is found. So like before, we're defining the method, and then we're going to give the user the option to run this later. This is also applying it to all the SSIDs. Um, so that we don't have to worry that uh, any of them, and we don't have to worry about querying any information about current state. If we just want to remove all of them, then we don't need to do an additional query to check that they exist. We can just update all of those SSIDs pretty quickly using this function. Now we are in the home stretch, actually. Uh, we are going to give the user an interactive prompt. So we've built the functions that are actually going to execute what we need, and we want to prompt the user who's actually running the application uh, that are they sure they want to do this, right? Uh, these changes are irreversible. Um, there's no undo when working with the API. Uh, when you're working with the API or the Python SDK, uh, that you're very powerful, right? You uh, should understand that uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So we have here in this code sample a few string literals, uh, which we're going to use so that if you ever needed to, for example, update the uh, language for those strings, you could update them all in a single place without going through and digging through code and potentially breaking code. Um, also useful if you're ever going to build a translation for your application into other languages would be very much, much easier to localize an application when the strings are abstracted out like this. So then if we have found any SSIDs that have limits, in other words, if the length of that list of SIDs with limits is more than, more than zero, 
uh, then we're going to ask the admin whether or not they want to remove all of them. And if we get the appropriate input, uh, if input yes, no, uh, we're just looking for any version of those uh, uh, why, why, yes, yes, you know, we're just looking for that in the response. Then we're going to uh, tell them that we're going to, uh, we're going to print the confirm string. And then we're going to uh, make sure that they really want to do it. And then we're going to actually execute. And that's where the remove SSID limits um, call comes in. So that function is the uh, Python SDK's function, remove SSID limits. And you can see the argument that we passed there is just the list of SSIDs with limits. So using similar input checking logic uh, for this last item, we're going to kind of handle that optional part about uh, removing the custom traffic shaping rules. So this will remove it from uh, all of the uh, we'll remove it from all of the SSIDs. So this might be useful, for example, if an admin had set a custom traffic shaping rule, but you're not sure where they configured it. So now technically you're done, right? I mean that was all it takes to build a script that does something uh, very useful. If you have a problem like that, um, you saw how it could iterate through. Uh, organizations, you saw how it could iterate through networks, you saw how it could iterate through SSIDs. Um, and by writing the application, we were able to quickly find all the instances of SSID level limits that might have been causing a poor user experience. And if any existed, we gave ourselves the option to remove them. It only took a few keystrokes. Um, in fact, the, the confirmation dialogues that we wrote into it are simply uh, for a better user experience. You don't even have to confirm if you don't want. But again, uh, if you're running this in a production environment, it's not a bad idea to build in those confirmation dialogues for your own benefit. Um, and if none of the bandwidth limits existed, the ones that we thought might be there because that one uh, junior admin had removed it, um, then we were able to confirm that, right? We were able to look through all the SSIDs and confirm that they didn't exist. Uh, or that the uh, limits didn't exist on those SSIDs. And then we could focus elsewhere on a different solution. So hopefully you feel pretty accomplished. Together we built a simple Python application using the Meraki Python SDK, and we never had to worry about formatting JSON REST HTTP requests or passing the API key several times in each call, et cetera. So while this was a pretty simple Python application, it's also very modular. We can take the different pieces of the application, the different methods that we defined, we can reuse them in other applications that we might wanna build. We can use some of the iteration logic that was built into there or the confirmation logic for the user interface and reuse that as we see fit in other applications with minimal effort. So hopefully you enjoyed it. And to learn more about our API, check out our interactive documentation. It's organized just like the API is, so you can understand the way that the endpoints are actually laid out. And you can run calls on the endpoints on a demo environment directly in the browser. So you don't have to download anything. You, if you already know about Postman, you don't have to download Postman. You can actually do most of what's possible in Postman directly in the browser if you are reading our interactive documentation. I find this very useful because you can, if you have an API key and you want to run a call on your own network just to see what information is returned or the formatting of the data payloads or anything like that, you can do that all within the browser without building a Python script at all. So it's very powerful. Uh, you can find it at the link here. In addition, if you'd like to run this specific code that we reviewed today yourself, you certainly can. You can find the source code on uh, our GitHub, uh, which is linked here um, under the Python notebooks. And uh, under the Python SDK's notebooks folder, you'll find a readme that gets you uh, up and going with Python notebooks in general. And you'll find the code that we used here in that repository. So let's take a look at some final thoughts. In writing the application and reviewing the code that we had in this demonstration, how might you have done things differently for your own environment, for your own style, um, your own procedural needs, whatever compliance, uh, system you're using um, or code management or code revision or uh, configuration management system. You can imagine how this was just the beginning. You can extend this to comply with whatever uh, needs of your organization. For example, you might make a plain text JSON formatted backup of the original configuration. So before changing anything, you can get the existing config and then save that uh, so that you know what was changed. Um, you could even then restore that configuration using APIs. Uh, or you could export a list of the affected SSIDs. You could send them to a CSV or an Excel file. And that might be useful for doing your root cause analysis, right? Finally, you can take a look at the code exchange. Uh, 
you can find the Python SDK, these code samples and more on our GitHub account, as I mentioned, github.com slash Meraki. So that's it. Thanks again for attending this Meraki dashboard API session. Hopefully this has helped you leverage the Meraki Python SDK in your own projects. Take care and stay safe.